Good morning, Beach family and friends. Welcome to our 2023 annual convocation. Many of you know, but some of you don't. My name is Karen Sism Gunn. I am your provost and senior vice president for academic affairs here at the beach. Let us now call. Thank you. Let us now call the 2023-24 academic year officially into session. It's an honor to welcome you all. And if you've been here long enough, you know that I'm gonna break that word down. Capital A, capital L, capital L. Welcome to you all to our event. But this is really your event this morning. Friends, colleagues, and supporters from across our beach community are present today, both in person, and many are watching via live stream. To plug back in, to connect with one another, to learn more about happenings at this beloved and highly regarded institution, and frankly, to prepare for what's to come this year. We have with us members from so many sectors of the beach community, from our very capable executive leadership team. I think I heard a shout out from them above the den. They are my friends. Uh, our world-class beach faculty. You do it. You do it. You're putting it down in the classrooms and studios and other academic settings. To our academic deans and associate deans, department chairs and program directors, all holding it down and providing strong leadership in the colleges. To our valued staff from across the five university divisions. You make the gears of this beach machine turn day in and day out. To many of our treasured why, the why we do what we do, our admirable students. <laughs> to community friends and supporters, from wherever you may be joining us today, be it in person or remotely, here's to a gracious welcome, a beach welcome. And thanks to all of you for being valued members of this community. On behalf of President Connolly and myself, thank you, thank you, thank you for your hard work as well as your heart work. Let us set our sights, minds, and hearts and intent on declaring together, y'all, you know I'm from the South, <laughs> y'all, it's gonna be a great year, yes. Before diving in deeper, let us pause in reverence and acknowledgement that California State University Long Beach is located on the sacred site of Pavanga. We acknowledge that we are on the land of the Tongva, Gabrieleño, and the Ahashaman Waneño nations who lived and continue to live here. We recognize the Tongva, Ahashaman nations and their spiritual connection as the first stewards and the traditional caretakers of this land. We thank them for their strength, perseverance, and resistance. All right. Friends, convocation is a revered tradition, one that President Connolly and I look forward to each year because it's one of the few times when we can come together, all of us, for one purpose, one goal, and that's a poignant reminder that we are one beach. As I think about the work that is to come, the many ways and many things that we aim to achieve and the ways that we aim to achieve those things, how we will get there from our different vantage points, the word that comes to mind 
is compassion. I think about this work we do and why we do it, that, it, that it's by necessity so deeply rooted in compassion. I mentioned this idea of heart work and every day presents a renewed opportunity to move toward this principled, empathetic frame of mind and commitment of deed. Now it's an honor to welcome friends of the College of Health and Human Services who will speak to us in this theme of what heart work looks like. They will share some of the ways they elevate compassion and kindness on this campus and impact lives along the way. Beach family, please help me welcome Dean Monica Lounsbury and Dr. Kristen DeMars. All right, good morning and greetings from the College of Health and Human Services. I'm Dr. Monica Lounsbury and I'm the proud Dean of the College of Health and Human Services. And it is an honor to help bring in the new academic year with a little spotlight on the work that we do in CHHS. The college is comprised of eight departments, three schools, 11 centers, and three clinics. We are home to 70 plus academic programs of which are all about people and helping them to live happier, healthier, and safer lives. As a part of their degree program, most of our students pursue practical field, internship, and or clinical hours in our surrounding communities that we serve. Together, they accumulate nearly one million hours annually, applying what they've learned, growing compassion, understanding and skill, all while serving people and advancing our communities. This is both an incredible opportunity and responsibility that transforms lives. I'm privileged to help share a great example of this work through the highly impactful work of our physical therapy students who provide PT services in our pro bono uh, neurologic clinic. Please welcome Dr. Kristen DeMars, who will tell us more about the exceptional work of our PT students. Thank you, Dr. Lounsbury, for the introduction. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Kristen DeMars, and I have been teaching and mentoring students in the Department of Physical Therapy since 2009. Our program is a three-year doctoral program that is de designed to prepare students to be autonomous practitioners of physical therapy. A critical component of our program is providing integrated clinical experiences where students get hands-on experience working with patients under the direct supervision of their faculty. The Neuro Pro Bono Clinic is one example of this type of learning experience. The clinic was originally developed in 2003 by Dr. Jody Cormack, current Vice Provost and former Chair of the Department of Physical Therapy. It originally occurred in a borrowed space in the pyramid, but thankfully it has uh, evolved to a newly renovated classroom that was designed to mimic a physical therapy clinic. Students and patients have the opportunity to utilize state-of-the-art equipment using force plate systems for balance training, body weight, supported treadmill training systems, parallel bars for gait training, and many, many other great uh, equipment and opportunities. The mission of our clinic is to provide physical therapy for individuals with neurologic disorders, including those who have sustained a stroke, brain injury, Parkinson's disease, and multiple sclerosis, among many others. These patients have either exhausted their therapy benefits or do not have access to physical therapy, but continue to demonstrate potential for change. Our students during their second year of a three-year program spend two semesters seeing patients twice a week for a 12-week course of therapy. Although the clinic was designed to help students develop their clinical skills, the greatest lesson learned by both faculty and students is the value of serving our community and the importance of pro bono services and optimizing the, the health of those with neurologic disorders. So now please enjoy our video. Thank you. I'm taking a mental. 
I'm Diana. I'm in the Doctor of Physical Therapy program here at Cal State Long Beach. Um, so a little bit about our program. So the first year is a lot of um, in-lecture material, learning from the books, and then um, during the beginning of the second year, we start to work with patients in our pro bono neuro clinic. I think that just getting to serve in our community and serve others is just a tremendous opportunity to make a splash, um, not even being in the field yet. And so, man, I just, I love coming here and just getting to learn from these patients. Um, it's patients from all different walks of life. We get great experiences with our patients from the community. Um, if they don't have resources through their uh, insurance or maybe they don't have insurance, this is an opportunity to get free care. The Neuro Pro Bono Clinic gives us a unique experience working with patients that might not have the resources, um, such as my patient. He suffered a stroke. Um, but we were able to get him into the program free of charge and just being able to see him progress you know and working hands-on gives us a unique experience you know um, he is from mexico him and his wife are from mexico excelente la verdad estoy muy agradecida porque él era una persona totalmente dependiente tenía que moverlo y llegando aquí en Two months, él empezó a caminar. You know, after his stroke, he was pretty much dependent you know, for everything. And so he started coming into the program and now he's able to walk. Which is really just appreciative of, of us as pseudo physical therapists, but I mean, it was Sergio and her heart. My patient is Marcos and he is the hardest working patient that I have ever worked with. He is so fun to work with. We were just outside doing some um, gait and adapting to different terrain. So that was really fun to work with him on. And then at the end, we incorporated some soccer kicks and he loves soccer. So that was fun for him. I mean, to have this kind of help and support and therapy and stuff is, is huge, with, especially with Parkinson's, because it's continuous. It's always gonna get worse, so you always have to keep trying to stay on top of it. And by doing things like this, it benefits us big time. I am an MS patient, so uh, exercise is a daily thing that I have to do. I love how in this program, there's a lot of students very eager to learn and teach and try new things, which I appreciate because um, with the MS, it's very unpredictable. We get great experiences with our patients. Um, for example, I had a stroke patient during our mobility portion of the clinic and it was just amazing to see the progress he made. He started off with not being able to contract his muscle, having to be supported um, with a body weight support system and having to manually move his limbs for him. And now he's to the point where he's walking with just a cane, uh, just having to grab onto his belt just for safety purposes, but walking with good speed, um, good mechanics. And it's just amazing and really fulfilling to see the progress he's made and the way we get to support him through that. Rehabilitation process. It is totally rewarding. Every Thursday, I look forward to Neuro Pro Bono Clinic. I love coming in here, and I always leave with the biggest smile on my face. It sets me up for a great day. Thank you, Dean Lounsbury and Dr. DeMars, for sharing that inspirational and uplifting video. The first time I saw it, I was moved to tears because this is our faculty, this is our students, and this is our mission in action. And it's such a beautiful example of how lives are being transformed daily here, right here at the beach, and truly shows how far compassion and care for one another can go Convocation is about elevating our bright spots across campus and displaying the powerful ways we uplift one another's work, interests, and accomplishments. Teamwork truly makes the dream work, and this work is churning across campus to achieve the high aims for which we as a campus are known. Let's acknowledge some of the folks who make it all happen. First, I wanna give a shout out to the commitment and the larger vision for our campus, our divisional leaders, the president's executive team, our VPs. You, yeah, clap.
I, I can tell you with the hard work that they do, uh, it's, it's sometimes unseen and, and it's, it can be thankless work, so I'm, I'm sure they appreciate that. Thank you for your collective work, efforts, and partnership. I know together we will keep leading this institution forward, and this is what it's all about. This is what it's all about for our students as they complete their educational goals. I especially want to recognize Daniel on the spot, Dan Montoya, who joined us this past year as Vice President of University Relations and Development. Dan, would you please stand? This is Dan's first convocation at the beach. And Dan, we know you are already making great strides with your team on behalf of the beach, and we thank you for what you do. Let's welcome you officially to the, to the, to the beach. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> Next, I have to give high praise to my Academic Affairs Senior Leadership Team. You're my collaborators, my friends, my trusted advisors. Thank you for everything you do for our unit. Thank you. I especially want to welcome our new Associate Vice President for Faculty Affairs, Patricia Perez, who will help guide efforts to support our faculty throughout this year. Patricia is running at full speed. She hit the ground running first day and is already making great strides. Thank you so much, Patricia, and thank you, team. <laughs> Next, a big shout out to our fierce, and that's the word, that's a purposeful word, our fierce academic deans. Y yes. <laughs> Your determined leadership and dedication to our students, faculty, and staff does not go unnoticed. It is my joy to work alongside you. My, all, all my heartfelt, heartfelt thanks to you, and you are my dream dean's team. Thank you, deans. <laughs> this year, we're especially pleased to welcome three new and newish deans <laughs> to the to the dean's crew please hold your applause until the end welcome dr royce smith dean of the college of the arts welcome elizabeth dill dean of the university library and welcome dr anna ortiz dean of the college of education I tell you what, each of them bring eager energy to their dean's crew. They've all hit the ground at full speed. We have every confidence that these new leaders will mobilize their colleges and usher in exciting new directions. Thank you so much to all of our deans. I also wish to recognize our dean's trusted confidants, our associate deans, ADs as we call them, Ensure the college's operational needs are met, and we highly value your work to keep our academic operations moving forward. We see you, ADs. Thank you. <laughs> of course, our academic enterprise could not be successful without the heavy lift efforts of our department chairs and program directors who operationalize policy, uh, policies in their respective colleges and work to assure our students have the courses they need when they need them. Thank you. Thank you to our dedicated, world-class beach faculty who bring their expertise, excellence, and scholarship to life for our students every day. You're often the most important point of engagement for our beach students. We reiterated that with 
when we were meeting with our new faculty members on yesterday, very often you're the first point of contact. Each of us can recall examples of those remarkable faculty who made a pivotal impact and impression upon us. So this is an incredible opportunity that comes with equally incredible responsibility. We continue to recognize your contributions as you lead our students to think critically, remain curious about the world, and see themselves confident in their ability to walk into it, to make their own mark. Thank you for being here, faculty. Thank you. Ah, it is with sincere gratitude that we thank our incredible division-wide staff and MPPs, incredible. You're the ones who manage with skill, who provide unwavering support, who bring those can-do attitudes to the game every day. From our maintenance and facilities teams, to our IT staff, our HR professionals, and divisional management friends throughout our divisions, your knowledge, work, and love, obvious love for this campus are truly valued, essential, and noticed. We appreciate you. Thank you, Beach staff and MPPs. Our ASI, Associated Students Incorporated, student government leaders, are also in the house. They are the voice of the Beach student body. Your passion to lead and serve your peers is commendable. Thousands of students depend on your thoughtful decisions and just leadership. There is no doubt that you will lead your peers with distinction this year and purpose. Welcome ASI leaders. We must recognize our campus governing bodies our employee affinity groups and represented leaders. Your commitment to this campus and to those you stand for is admirable. Thank you for being important change agents for the beach. And now there are some truly special guests here today. Each year, we select students who have achieved extraordinary accomplishments as recipients of the prestigious President's Scholarship. This highly recognized program, both in the state and nationwide, prepares these bright minds for success at the beach and beyond. I now ask our President's Scholars to please stand if you're able to do so or wave to be recognized. President Scholars, you are true exemplars of scholarly excellence. We are encouraged by your brilliance in thought and empathy for humankind. Many of you have family here today, and I got a chance to just kind of do a walkthrough and say hello to you and just let you know how proud we are along with you of your students, of your scholars. It's so beautiful for you to be here to share in this recognition. Congratulations and welcome, scholars. Let's give them another round of applause. Another highly celebrated group joining us remotely are our Long Beach College Promise students. The Promise supports and, make po and makes possible a college education for each student in the Long Beach Unified School District. This is a transformational program and is a feature effort for the beach toward creating a, a, a greater access to education for all. We are excited for you, Promise students, and we, know, and, and we want you to know that you have a whole campus cheering for you. Welcome to our Long Beach Promise students. Welcome. <laughs> All right.
right, now it's time to hear from some other folks. Please help me welcome our Academic Senate Chair, Dr. Pei Fang Hong, to the stage. Dr. Hung is an associate professor of the Department of Speech Language Pathology and a wonderful collaborator and advocate for Beach faculty. Welcome, Dr. Hung. Thank you, Paul of Gong, and good morning, everyone. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity. I cannot talk English today. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak today. My name is Pei Fang Hong, the Chair of Speech Language Pathology Department. I'm thrilled to serve as Academic Center Chair again this year, and I'm proud to be a me faculty member of this incredible university. Students are the heart of Cal State Long Beach, and the faculty are the foundation of Cal State Long Beach. As the driving force of the university, faculty provide excellent teaching, transformative research, scholarship, and creative endeavors, along with impactful service. In the new academic year, we continue working together and turning our shared commitments into action for institutional changes and promoting student and faculty success. Diversity, equity, inclusiveness, and accessibility continue to be the center of our work at Academic Senate, we value different voices, expertise, point of view. The work of shared governance cannot be accomplished without you. Here, I wanted to take the opportunity to say thank you, my colleague, for your contributions to service and advance shared governance. As our con institution continue to change in size and scope, we all recognize the need for improving processes to help us recruit and retain the best faculty. This year, the Academic Center will continue working on revising reappointments, tenure, and promotion, or TP policy. I invite you to participate and help lead effort in your departments, schools, colleges, and units to accomplish this incredibly important work. Additionally, we have much more policy work to tackle this year. For example, we will work on revising departmentalization policy, certificate policy, grant appeal procedure, student grievance policy, master's policy, just to name a few. <laughs> uh, we will also continue working on reviewing new academic programs, majors, minors, the Academic Center invites you to shape our university's future through actively participate in committee work, working together with other community partners, for example, our student organization, staff council, affinity groups, etc. As a first generation immigrant from Taiwan and LGBTQ faculty of color, I'm proud to be part of our beach community and appreciate the opportunity, this opportunities this community offer. I look forward in this coming year to working with you and also to the progress we can all make together to build a welcoming, collaborative, and diverse beach community. Thank you. Go Beach. Thank you very much. Now I have the honor of welcoming our staff council chair, Mr. Alessandro Russo. Alessandro, Alessandro served as department specialist for College of Liberal Arts Economics. He graciously leads and voices his support and appreciation of all our Cal State Long Beach staff. He's a proud Italian American and Beach alumni, alumnus who graduated with his bachelor's and master's degree from Cal State Long Beach. Please help me welcome Mr. Alessandro Russo. Good morning, Beach family. To our administrators, 
the senior leadership team, faculty, students, and our staff. Thank you, President Connolly and Provost Sism Gunn for your gracious invitation in giving me this honor to speak to you all this morning on behalf of staff as CSULB's Staff Council Chair. Now we begin this new academic year as we always do, full of hope, anticipation, and optimism. The hope that the fruit of our labors will not only impact the lives of our students, but also provide us with feelings of achievement and satisfaction. That our efforts create an inclusive, equitable, and accessible environment for all. That our work gives us meaning. The antici anticipation of wondering what great things will be accomplished this academic year. That our contributions make a positive and lasting impact that uplifts and encourages in the hope that this campus will be a beacon for kindness and compassion that is inviting and welcoming to and for all. When we uplift one another, we can accomplish great things. And that all starts with each one of us, the collective beach family, this one beach. We have our challenges, of course. The COVID years, and maybe a bit of wisdom as I mature in age, have made me realize much more so that life is fleeting and so brief that the background noise, those frivolous tensions, small arguments and disagreements, and those little personality clashes that we all experience are simply a waste of valuable time. That it is best to put myself in someone else's shoes to understand them and their point of view. To do away with all that trivial noise and to leave a legacy of which I am proud. As Wal Wal Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, quote, you cannot do kindness too soon, for you never know how soon it will be too late." End quote. We should all be intentional in encouraging one another to do our best, to, to, to promote the best in one another, and lead with compassion. Because when we do, we can accomplish anything. We can take pride in knowing it was all worth it. I challenge you all to be intentional in your interactions with one another, to be the cheerleaders for one another and show your appreciation for one another. In staff council, I have recently been challenging our staff to nominate a fellow and worthy staff member for our Best of the Beach program, to take the time to recognize and appreciate the contributions of an individual can completely change for the better and positively inspire others. I just don't say it, I do it. I challenge you all to do it, at minimum, to simply take the time to stop in the middle of a busy workday and thank someone for their contributions to our campus. To be deliberate and kind in your actions with one another should not be a difficult task. It elicits a positive work environment and evokes pride in one's work. My goal for staff council has been to provide an environment for staff that is inclusive and welcoming, a place for staff to share their ideas and to demonstrate their talents. Because to succeed is to be kind. As Mr. Rogers once said, quote, there are three ways to ultimate success. The first way is to be kind. The second way is to be kind. The third way is to be kind, end quote. Please be kind to one another and have the best year yet. Thank you and go beach. Thank you all. I now have the honor of introducing our new ASI president, Mitali Jain. Mitali is a fourth year student of nutrition and dietetics. Upon graduation, she plans to explore careers in her field and earn a master's degree. Born in India, Mitali will be the first in her family to get a degree in the US, and she has a passion for student advocacy. Please welcome Mitali Jain. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Provost Sism Gunn and President Conley. It is an honor to be here this morning addressing this esteemed group. Welcome to our new and returning students, faculty, staff, administrators, and all of our guests present this morning. My name is Mitali Chin, and I have the honor of serving as ASI president. 
As we gather today at this convocation, centered around the theme, uplift, elevating kindness and compassion, I am reminded of the values that have been deeply ingrained in me since my upbringing in India. As a 14-year-old immigrant in the United States, brimming with hopes and dreams, I encountered challenges that tested my values and my resilience. My high school journey, for example, was marked by encounters with unsympathetic and occasionally harsh counselors and advisors. Their actions made me believe that my background and my language barrier I grappled with would forever hold me back. During these moments of isolation and frustration, I was left struggling with my sense of identity and belonging. At such times, I often found myself questioning, what is wrong with me? Why is it always me? Conversations with friends and peers have revealed that I'm not alone in asking these questions. The journey through college, regardless of one's background, origin, or circumstances can be daunting, isolating, and even frightening experience. In the current world, plagued by an epidemic of isolation and loneliness, driven by an unprecedented pandemic, the need for kindness and compassion has never been more urgent. This need extends to spaces such as educational institutions, where these qualities are not always expected. Higher education, for instance, is one such space where compassion and kindness can often be overlooked. Nevertheless, the beach aspires to be a haven that places students and their holistic well-being at the forefront. Throughout my time here, I've had the privilege of interacting with outstanding faculty, staff, and university administrators. One specific instance stands out, an instance that highlights the compassion and commitment of a particular professor. Going beyond her already impressive standards, she provided me with the guidance that deeply resonated with my aspirations. Always available during office hours, she extended her assistance beyond academia, during showing a sincere willingness to help me navigate challenges. This unwavering support reminded me that she saw me as a person first and a student second. The impact of that moment continues to resonate within me, a testament to the enduring significance of her mentorship. These incredible interactions made me realize the answer to my earlier question was simple. I didn't need to change. I needed an environment that believed in me and understood me. The beach has been that place for me. As we embark on this academic year, let us firmly uphold these virtues of kindness and compassion. More broadly, let us stand as advocates for inclusivity, acceptance, equity, and justice. ASI's commitment to these values is vividly demonstrated through the Future U project. Last year, when my predecessor introduced this project, it was in its early stages. We initiated an intense and sustained campaign to engage with campus community about the possibility of renovating and expanding the university student union. After a year of active engagement, connecting with more than 17,000 campus stakeholders, this project has been approved. The USU has long served as the campus communal space and this endeavor will ensure its future enhancement into an equitable and accessible space for future generation of Long Beach State students. At ASI, our goal is always to create a campus space where students are a priority, where uplifting them takes precedence, and where compassion and kindness are the guiding principles. Let us all embrace this year as a chance to uplift one another, recognizing that our differences fortify us and our diverse narratives enrich the tapestry of our university community. Together, we shall cultivate an environment that nurtures growth, leaving no room for isolation or neglect. Thank you, and go Beach. Thank you, President Matali, for that beautiful message. Thank you for sharing your story. 
it was an inspiring one. Good luck with your leadership and your academics this year. Yes, Beach family, those are all reasons, those comments that you've heard today, to feel uplifted and to recognize that admittedly, sometimes your unsung work, to hear words of goodwill from our colleagues and to see our students leading in ways that make us feel the realness of this hard work. Hearing our campus members share their powerful words makes me incredibly hopeful for this upcoming academic year. Now this is not Pollyanna speak. No question there will be challenges, but aren't there always? This year is yet another chance to do things that matter for the big picture of this campus. In my division and many other spaces on campus, we've been having intentional, impactful, and honest conversations about an important question to which the answer is not, already, uh, not always obvious. And that is, how do all members of this campus feel about their particular sense of belonging here at the beach? There was a quote shared in one of these focused discussions that struck several members of our leadership team. Quote, reading theoretical and empirical writing about sense of belonging, where it comes from and how it operates in student experiences raises another question for me. What are we in higher education doing to make our institutions and systems worth belonging to? I sat with this. I came back to this thought more than once. It's how every one of us, from our faculty, to our divisional management, to our groundskeeping team, our executive leadership team, and beyond, every single one of us can and does add to this collective culture and atmosphere based on what we do, how we go about doing it, and how it impacts others. One key connection to being agents of an environment of welcome and belonging is compassion. Simply put, our Beach 2030 strategic goals spell out what kind of community we strive to be and to cultivate toward an unmistakably natural, authentic state of being while doing business or fun or whatever it is at the beach. We have declared as a sacrosanct beach strategic priority to build community by, quote, supporting a compassionate community that is characterized by a strong sense of belonging, shared governance, and shared responsibility. We have declared our intent to do this work from the heart to embed compassion strategically memorialized into every aspect of this institution Compassion is declared a priority for this campus because it goes even deeper than our strategic goals. Compassion is rooted in the very core values of Cal State Long Beach. We've made this promise to one another and all who are here and want to be here that, quote, compassion, creativity, and innovation characterize our culture, end quote. So when I think about our beach culture, those who cultivate it, those who compose it, I think about the power that each of us possess to be a day maker for somebody. The power we choose, that we must choose intentionally to uplift, affirm, and extend our goodwill toward one another. With reports of diminishing morale and growing concerns about post-pandemic burnout, there will be no back to normal. That normal is gone. This is a next normal in which we must figure out how to continue to thrive. And this means learning to do 
so in new ways. Let's be honest. The past several years have been taxing, tiresome, and difficult to navigate, and none of us have gone unaffected. But as a campus, we cannot be successful if we who are stewards of this campus also struggle to find a culture worthy of belonging to. It is my firm belief that campus culture starts with us, both individually, as we self-reflect and take to task our own unspoken thoughts, and collectively, as we work together as parts of a greater whole to reaffirm our strategic ideals. What does compassion look like? You've seen examples of what compassion looks like, but there are other ways to think about compassion, simple ways. It's when we pause to sit with how something is going to come across to someone before we say it. It's when we make space for others to voice, to share context, and lend respect and credence to those moments, even if we don't disagree, if, even if we don't agree. It's when we practice acts of kindness, a thank you to a colleague, an email to give a way to go shout out. Kindness and grace are simple words with a measurable impact when practiced. An understanding of things those near us may be experiencing, even if those things are not our own direct lived experience, but acknowledging that it's real for that person and what they may be going through. Whether it be a student undergoing a hardship or a staff member in the cubicle next to you showing signs of distress, we each play a role in our collective mission and shared responsibility to build a compassionate community worthy of belonging to. As we face this new year, let us consciously reflect on the many ways we contribute to this campus by being compassionate, gracious, and empathetic to those we encounter. In our small gestures of goodwill and the quality of our interactions that mean so much more than admittedly we sometimes don't slow down enough to acknowledge, we don't mean to do that. But the pace of the beach is intense, and sometimes our thoughts are moving at the speed of light. But let's always remember, it's a part of humanity to want to connect, to be recognized, loved, included, and respected as our authentic selves. These are not wants. These are human needs. We are wired this way as human beings. That student who walks out on the yard and sees no one to connect with needs this. That new faculty member needs this. That staff member who wants to speak up, who wants to speak up needs this. All of us need this. That said, the great part of this is we are the beach, meaning every day there are inspiring stories being told, moments being shared, and kindness being expressed where our compassionate community is being lived out. One exemplar of this compassion is through our faculty learning communities. Facilitated by our faculty center, these communities of practice introduce our instructors to best practices for teaching and interacting with students from culturally diverse backgrounds, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as practices to support meaningful and accessible learning for all capital A, capital L, capital L students. They're shaping how our instructors self-reflect on their courses, their approaches, and their instructional modes, and are leading to deeper understanding of our students and how their identities influence their experiences. They show great promise and help us establish classroom environments where all students will feel recognized, supported, seen, and understood. Compassionate teaching. Our campus is launching innovative new approaches to teaching, learning, and belonging through the new Beach XP program. This fall, we are extremely excited to celebrate this new learning community for first time, first year students. Beach XP, short for Beach Experience, is an all hands on deck initiative designed to bolster retention of our beach students during that critical first year. Beach XP students will learn together in a cohorted class structure engage in workshops, <clears throat> excuse me, 
tours, some built-in fun time, and build beach community among themselves as peers. The shared experience of learning together, looking out for one another, and building lasting peer connections will be powerful. <clears throat> beach XP is truly a campus-wide approach. From faculty learning tools, to building community in the classroom, to our revered student affairs partners coordinating activities and services, to academic staff working diligently to create the cohorted schedules, which was a new undertaking, and establish exciting new ways to engage our first year beach students. When I say all hands on deck, it has truly been all hands on deck and hearts involved. So many across campus have collectively created this incredible experience for our students, so I thank you collectively. I'm eager to see the results of these efforts, and there's so many of you to thank for being collaborative and making it happen. Collaborative learning. They appreciate that. Many of them are here today. Compassionate learning, compassionate collaboration. Beach kindness, <clears throat> excuse me, beach kindness and compassion are evident in the programming and services of care we provide for all of our community. From our basic needs program and beach pantry to our counseling services, our pro bono neuro clinic that you saw a clip on uh, earlier in the program, and so many other focused efforts. Beach Wellness, our bold campus mental health plan, is forging a path for all of our campus community to support the mental and physical health of our students, faculty, and staff. This past year, a collaboration between the counseling and psychological services known as CAPS, Basic Needs, and, fa and Faculty Affairs launched a new Wellness Ambassador Certificate. This program promotes wellness by preparing faculty and staff to respond to students facing crises and challenges. As our students return to campus, they will need support more than ever. And it's a beautiful thing to see so many of our campus members responding to be prepared for this call. The next step in our campus commitment to mental, mental health is to provide training to every person on campus. The Division of Student Affairs has developed a section of the Beach Wellness website dedicated to mental health and ally trainings to support our students. This collective effort speaks to our shared responsibility to ensure our campus members are safe, healthy, and feel supported. Compassionate care. Finally, Compassion unfolds through how we prepare our students for the future. Over the past year, the beach was among 45 other campuses selected for the inaugural Californians for All College Core Program. The state initiative allows college students to learn through community organizations, build leadership and civic responsibility, while supporting community-based organizations to build more equitable communities. In our first year, we are and remain number one in the state for completed internship hours and have led and still lead in the early completion of the 450 hour requirement. That's an accolade. <laughs> this is an exciting effort for sure. Our students will carry the torch for us and bring our beach compassion to our communities throughout the state and beyond. Compassionate preparation. Going back to that question, what are we in higher education doing to make our institutions and systems worth belonging to? It's truly a joy, even contemplating that question, to have shared some of the ways compassion and care roll up toward fueling an ever-evolving beach that believes in reaching people where they are, creating paths to connection, and acknowledging the value in each of us. In closing, 
What I hope you remember is there is a movement afoot at the beach that is holistically enriching this community. What we teach, lead, create, manage, direct, and imagine from places of scholarship and training, what I call our collective what, is being pursued through a beach value system of mutual respect, authenticity, inclusion, and love for our common humanity, what I call our collective how. This is ours, all of us. Your spot in this movement has your name on it. Kindness plus empathy equals compassion. This is us. Thank you, my friends, and go beach. <laughs> Family, it's a pleasure to introduce our president, Jane Close Connolly. Dr. Connolly is an advocate for us all and leads this campus to reach new heights year in and year out. And I, for one, am all in on it. Please welcome to the stage, Jane Close Connolly. Well, uh, uh, welcome. I'm really honored to be with you this morning. Uh, let me add my welcome to my the President's Scholarship winners. I'm always so proud to be associated with you, and congratulations to your families. And of course, to all the new and returning faculty and staff who are here. Um, I'm really glad. I, I think I see Kali Conley as a special guest. Okay. Talk to Kali about retirement. He's now majoring in retirement. So, <laughs> so thank you, uh, and thank you all uh, for, uh, again, for being here. So my title this year uh, for this speech is Let's Build a Better Beach. Um, and there are multiple aspects to this effort from the very literal, every red part of that map uh, shows uh, where our uh, colleagues are renovating or building, or they're, in, they're adding sprinkler systems, they're planning for additional student housing, they're enlarging our child and family center, updating Liberal Arts One. I walked through there yesterday. If you haven't seen it, you should go over and uh, appreciate it. Also, improvements to the kinesiology building, uh, completing the, completed some outdoor classrooms, they're cooling down some of our old buildings and more. So thank you, Beach Building Services, colleagues from the Division of Administration and Finance. In addition, our uh, No Barriers campaign for Cal State Long Beach is part of building a better beach. Uh, state resources are simply insufficient to offer our faculty, our staff, and students the edge of excellence they all deserve the compensation they need, or the facilities that support their work. Thank you, University Relations and Development colleagues, for moving us ever closer to our goal of $275 million, supporting student achievement, a work and innovation force for California, and all the efforts we do for the public good. Now, the provost has already talked to you about Beach XP, but I'm gonna repeat her because I am very excited about um, watching during this semester uh, how we'll showcase the results of building new academic structures created by faculty and, and academic and student affairs leadership and staff. Beach XP for our first generation students will offer many students new community experiences uh, in support of their academic and personal success, including learning cohorts, as you've heard, smaller classes, mentoring, optional social activities, and a shared physical facility, to mention just a few aspects. 
this is an important pilot for what I hope will, in fact, increase double and maybe triple in coming years. So thank you, academic and student affairs colleagues, for this, and also for all the work being done on the relaunch and reinvigoration of our Long Beach College Promise Program. You've also heard about um, our beach wellness program. Again, I'm, I'm repeating it to, so you don't forget. Uh, last year, our Division of Student Affairs built a strategic mental health plan with at least 60 strategies to improve our students' well-being. Time, time constraints obviously don't allow that I go into detail. Uh, if you want to stay, I will go into detail later. But I do recommend that you go to this website because I think you'll be inspired by this plan, and you'll see early outcomes. One of my favorite commitments found in the plan is that beach students in need, for beach students in need, there's no wrong door when seeking help. 24-7 coordinated help is available for all student needs. So thank you, DSA colleagues, very important. Now, uh, our Division of Informational Te uh, Information Technology has the best acronym at the university. Their acronym is Do It. And uh, I think that, uh, that acronym actually represents the very heart our, of our Division of Informational Information Technology. Uh, the, the division has built networks and found and created vital software and devices, kept us secure from hackers, uh, help visitors to find their way around campus made us and made us leaders in the CSU and high-tech solutions. Uh, you know, many backbone services are taken for granted until something goes wrong. So let's take a moment to notice our email, our phones, our networks, high-performance computing options, student virtual labs, and at-the-elbow services, to name just a few that keep the university humming 24-7, 365. Thank you, Do It and ATS colleagues for making it possible to notice you so rarely. <laughs> so as you can uh, see, you all have been very bu busy building the beach in so many ways. And this morning, I want to focus on building a structure, a governance structure, an oversight structure in support of better interpersonal climates that you've heard asked for throughout today, uh, climates that reflect belonging, respect, and equity. Last year, my remarks at this event, I'm sure you all remember exactly, uh, focused on two of our Beach 2030 action zones building an equitable and empowering culture, and being a student-ready university. Obviously, these two are intertwined, as we can't be student-ready unless we are devoted to meeting every student where they are. So today, I want to move from these big ideas to introducing a proposal for how to operationalize our commitment to building an environment in which everyone feels they belong and are valued at the beach. I want us represented in that bottom right corner there. I want our organization fundamentally to be a just organization. Take a moment to look at that. So I want us obviously to increase access to, uh, to students and faculty and staff at the beach, but I know that we'll need to change some things about ourselves to make sure that when we uh, welcome people to the beach, they find a sense of belonging and connection. I'm sharing this with you um, this morning, actually to invite uh, your feedback, and eventually, I hope, buy-in to a final product. We won't be leaders in this space without an engaged critical mass of us. So what I'm offering today is awaiting your thoughts. Over the next few months, we'll have campus convenings, you'll be invited to feedback sessions, and I hope, and we all hope, that you will join us in this collective vision to become a better beach. You know, many universities have opted to create cabinet-level positions that might be called a VP for diversity, equity, um, belonging, or some other descriptor. And that puts 
a person as the one responsible for creating and monitoring progress toward environments that are inclusive and that remove barriers for success for every person, whatever their identity might be. We could, and we might do this someday, but we are in the enviable position of being a university that has been active at multiple levels already in putting our commitments to building a thriving culture into action. Therefore, I'm proposing something that creates a network of groups accountable to a steering committee that is responsible to me and is connected to our existing compliance structures. The new structure remains a work in progress as we roll it out to the campus with the intention of adjusting the structure as your input helps us shape a collective vision of how to build a culture of belonging on our campus. The heart of the proposed structure represents our values and guiding principles and you've heard a lot about that this morning, where we embrace a shared understanding of what it means to achieve equity on our campus. The remaining circles generating out from the values represent the structure, the activities and tools we utilize to expand our uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility efforts. The steering committee and collaborative represents the teams who will take the lead in the campus-wide efforts. And finally, our subcommittees the DEIA experts working in our divisions, our colleges, and our departments. I want to honor and amplify the great work that is going on in the colleges, the divisions, departments, in several of our centers that promote research and service with an equity lens, especially our Truth, Racial Healing and Transformation Center, our other centers that seek to disrupt health, educational, ableism, inequities, and in my presidential committees, commissions, equity and change, status of women and sustainability, and in our employee affinity groups. I don't want to reinvent what we already have, but rather create a network so we can learn from each other, recognize gaps, and use best practices. We can map what we're doing, set up measurable outcomes to evaluate our progress, hold ourselves accountable, and become a leader in the CSU and well beyond. Whatever the organization, we must attend to at least the following dimensions. Are our campus policies and procedures equitable? Are we managing recruitments of faculty, staff, and students to maximize equity and representation? Do we have campus supports for all faculty, staff, students, and administrators that emphasize belongingness are we keeping our talent and reducing turnover among all groups? What kind of leadership training are we implementing for our managers and supervisors? Are we building and attending meetings to foster campus-wide dialogues on truth, healing, and transformation? What, are, what is our strategic plan to build and maintain belongingness, and how are we measuring our progress? So you might wonder, why should everybody take part in this work? You're exhausted. Well, because I know we'll all benefit. And importantly, our students will be the special beneficiaries during both their time with us and after they graduate. They will be armed with specific skills in conflict resolution, working in and managing diverse teams, self-efficacy, and pride in all they bring from their identity backgrounds. All Beach community members, Students and graduates should feel empowered to be their authentic selves. This, I believe, can be the most powerful mental health and well-being intervention we offer. I am painfully aware that efforts to increase success and belonging at universities are under attack in other states. Fortunately, we don't live there. Uh, yes. But let me say how I see the current landscape, and we can talk about this and argue about this if you have a different view. While legislative mandates from decades ago requiring that we build ramps for colleagues with mobility challenges, offer accommodations to those with hearing or, and visual constraints, create individual programs of 
learning for those with learning differences and neurologically diverse ways of experiencing the world. They were considered burdensome. I was there when the, those, those, those laws became uh, in, in effect. But by and large, they were seen as just. That is leveling the playing field for those whose identities required just a bit of extra attention. In this moment, however, when our attention has turned to racial justice and issues related to our human array of sexual and gender identities, efforts to create targeted programs or teach real history, those have been labeled as woke and somehow illegal. Whether from religious dogma, guilt, ignorance, or perceived threat, some, um, and maybe some among us, I understand, prefer that such uncomfortable topics, such as systemic racism, homophobia, and our country's and the world's shameful history and present of slavery be erased from classrooms and other organizations. It's not gonna happen here. My analogy is weak to be sure, because today's woke efforts are not aimed at personal, physical, or cognitive challenges, but as, at a system built to preserve privileges for certain parts of the population. The system is comfortable for many, but it is not just. I'd rather describe us as alert to what others may require. That's an alert dog. I wish I had, I wish that was my dog and would look at me like that. Hi, Jane. So I'd rather us be described as alert uh, to what others may require to ensure their success. Such alertness is, seems to me to be fundamental to good teaching, good living, and being student ready. So as we embark on this emerging structure to govern our work for Beach 2030's goal to create and maintain an empowering and equitable culture, my wish is that it makes us more alert to how our systems, administrative regulations, personal styles, and unexamined norms may be supporting or inhibiting our efforts to, show all, to allow all of us to become our best selves. Take a moment to imagine working, living, teaching, creating, learning, researching in a place that has your back, believes in you and your aspirations, and that exists fundamentally to promote your success. A place that accepts differences in religious, political, ethnic, racial, ability, sexual, and other identity realities with a conviction that diversity is our strength, not our enemy. Not a threat, but an opportunity for greatness. It is important to seek affinity groups, but it's also necessary and courageous to find ways to make use of our differences to be the best university in the galaxy, which I know we all wanna be. It is an easy work, and I know I'll be doing it for the rest of my life, but it is vital to confront the world as it is and our campus as it is with an increasingly diverse population that can easily become polarized if we don't all work to build trust. But I would add trust and verify. Our national and international scenes do not inspire trust, but we can create an environment that while certainly imperfect, is characterized by authenticity and resilience. A place free of constraining stereotypes that promotes opportunity, inspires dreams, and lifts aspirations a place to which you can look forward to coming because here you are surrounded by people who are invested in your success. I say, let's make it so. Go Beach. Thank you so much to our fearless leader, President Jane Close Connolly. Those words were inspiring, they were focusing, and we truly now have much food for thought as we stride into confidently this new academic year. To each of you here, and those of you who are joining us via live stream, we wish you success, prosperity, compassion, fulfillment, and joy this year. This concludes our event. Go you, go beach!
this to complain about 